Welcome to DIY Made Easy. Today, we're unlocking the power of Home Assistant by exploring helpers, the secret sauce to building a smarter and more dynamic home automation setup. This is the first video of three, where we'll break down how helpers work and how they can make your smart home more powerful and flexible. We'll start with three essential helpers, input boolean, input number, and input select. By the end of this video, you'll see how these simple tools can level up your automations and dashboards without writing a single line of code. Let's dive in. So what are helpers? Think of them as the brain power behind your smart home. While physical devices like smart lights or switches handle the actions, helpers are virtual tools that manage and store information. They're not physical gadgets. They live entirely in Home Assistant, but make automations and dashboards smarter and more flexible. For example, imagine you want a button to toggle between two lighting scenes. Relax and focus. Instead of tying this directly to your light settings, you'd use a helper to store the current scene and switch between them easily. Helpers let you simplify and customize your smart home. They're the bridge between your creativity and what your devices can do. And here's the best part. They make complex setups feel straightforward. Let's create a few helpers together. You can follow along in your Home Assistant dashboard. I'll start by creating a toggle helper to control whether my wake-up alarm is on or off. To do that, I go to Settings, then Devices and Services, and open the Helpers tab. From there, I click Create Helper, choose Toggle, and name it Alarm. Once I hit Create, the new helper appears, and I can already turn it on and off manually. But right now it doesn't do anything, so let's put it to work. To make this more visual, I'll add it to my dashboard. First, I enter Edit Mode by clicking the pencil icon in the top right. Then I create a new view to keep things organized. I name it Helpers and hit Save. Inside this view, I add a button card select the alarm entity and save the changes. Now I have a button that toggles the helper from on to off, but at this point it still doesn't affect any automations. That's where the real power of helpers comes in. I want this toggle to actually control whether my morning alarm automation runs. So I go to automations and scenes in the settings and open my existing alarm automation. Right now this automation plays a wake up message at a set time every day but I don't always want it to run, so I need to add a condition. I click Add Condition, select Entity, and choose the alarm helper I just created. Then I set the state to on, meaning the alarm will only activate if this helper is turned on. Now, with this simple toggle, I can enable or disable my morning alarm with just one tap on my dashboard. But this is just the beginning. Toggle helpers can do so much more. Imagine setting up a security alert mode that locks your doors, flashes the lights red, and sends emergency notifications with a single switch, or activating quiet hours, automatically lowering the volume on media players, dimming the lights, and silencing notifications at night. Maybe you want a vacation mode that mimics presence while you're away, randomly turning lights on and off and disabling unnecessary automations, or a party mode that starts your favorite playlist, sets up colorful lighting, and ensures your bedtime routine doesn't interfere with the fun. Even something as simple as a focus mode can be useful. Turning off smart notifications, adjusting the lighting, and making sure you won't be disturbed while working. And if you're looking to save energy, you can create an energy saving mode that lowers brightness, adjusts the thermostat, and shuts down non-essential devices when you're not home. All of this just by using a simple toggle helper. It's an incredibly powerful tool that lets you take control of your smart home in ways that fit your daily life. You can see real uses of this helper in action in two videos I made, Home Assistant Alarm Clock Dashboard and Custom LG TV Remote in Home Assistant. These showcase how toggle helpers can be used in real automations, making your smart home even more powerful. Check them out. Now, let me show you the number helper in action. I'm going to create a number helper that sets the default TV volume whenever I turn on the TV. To do that, I go to Settings, then Devices and Services, navigate to the Helpers tab, and click Create Helper. From the list, 
I choose number and name it TV volume. Since my TV volume ranges from 0 to 100, I'll set the minimum value to 0 and the maximum value to 1. This way, I can scale the value correctly when setting the volume. I also set the step to 0.05, meaning each adjustment will be in increments of 5 when mapped to the TV. Then I hit Create. Now let's add it to the dashboard. I go back to the Helper's dashboard, add a new card, and select Entities. I remove the default entities and replace the first one with the TV Volume Helper I just created. Once I hit Save and click Done, I now have a slider that lets me set the default TV volume. But for this to actually work, I need to create an automation. I go to Automations and Scenes, click Create Automation, and choose Create New Automation. In the configuration, I click Add Trigger, select Device, and choose Living Room TV. For the trigger, I select Living Room TV turned on. Next, I add an action. From the list, I select Media Player, then Set Volume. By default, there's a slider for setting the volume manually, but I don't want a fixed value. I want it to use the value from the helper. So I open the menu and choose Edit in YAML. Here, I insert the input state code for the helper in the Volume Level field. I'll leave this code in the description, so you'll just need to update the name if you used a different one. After saving, I name the automation TV on Volume. Now when I turn on the TV, it will automatically set the volume to whatever value I chose on the dashboard. And that's just one example of what you can do with a number helper. You can also use it to control how long the sprinklers run, dynamically adjusting the watering time right from your dashboard. Or use it to set a countdown timer, perfect for cooking, workouts, or reminders. It's great for adjusting the target temperature of a smart thermostat or setting a custom delay for turning off lights after motion stops. You can even fine-tune brightness for your lights or control the volume of your smart alarm clock, all without editing complex automations. With the Number Helper, your smart home becomes more flexible and customizable, giving you even more control over your automations. Now let's take a look at the drop-down helper. For this example, I'll create one to manage my notification preferences. I start by going to Settings, then Devices and Services, and from there, I enter the Helpers tab and create a new one. From the list, I select Dropdown and name it Notification Level. Next, I add my options, All, Important, and Off. Once I hit Create, the helper is ready. If I open it, I can see a dropdown with the values I just added. Now, let's add it to the dashboard. I enter Edit Mode, Add Another Entities card, remove the default entities, and replace the first one with my notification level helper. After saving, I hit Done, and now I have a dropdown in my dashboard where I can choose my notification level. But right now it's just a dropdown, it doesn't actually do anything yet. So let's fix that by integrating it into an automation. I already have an automation that sends me a notification every day at 9.50 p.m. with the current room temperatures. I want this automation to only run when my notification level is set to all. To do that, I open the automation, add a condition, and choose Entity and State. For the entity, I select Notification Level, and for the state, I set it to all. After saving, this means that if my drop-down is set to all, I'll receive the notification. But if it's set to important or off, it won't trigger. Now, I want to expand this so that the notification also sends when important is selected. To do that, I go back into the automation, remove the existing condition, and instead I add a building block. From the list, I select OR, which allows the automation to run if any of the conditions inside it are met. Inside this block, I add two conditions, one that checks if notification level is set to ALL, and another that checks if notification level is set to IMPORTANT. Now if the dropdown is set to either ALL or IMPORTANT, I'll receive the notification. But if I set it to off, it won't run. And just like that, I've turned a simple dropdown into a powerful way to control notifications. But dropdown helpers can be used for so much more. For example, you could create one to select a watering schedule for your garden, choosing between daily, alternate days, or manual, with automations adjusting accordingly. Or use one to manually set your thermostat mode, switching between off, heat, cool, or eco. You can even create one for seasonal decorations, choosing between Christmas, Halloween, or New Year, triggering automations that adjust smart lighting and play holiday-themed music. 
Or how about a lighting mode selector for a room? With options like relax, focus, party, or night, you can instantly change the ambiance with a single selection. The possibilities with drop-down helpers are endless, making your smart home feel even more customized and dynamic. And that's it. We've now seen how helpers can make Home Assistant more powerful and flexible. We started with a toggle helper to easily enable or disable automations, then moved on to a number helper to set dynamic values like TV volume, and finally, we explored a drop-down helper to customize notifications. These are just a few examples, but helpers can do so much more. I'll be making more videos covering other types of helpers and how you can use them to create even more advanced automations. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next ones. Let me know in the comments how you're using helpers in your smart home. I'd love to hear your ideas. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.